I just finished watching The Haunting of Hill House and you guys need to watch this show. It's so good. This whole video is gonna be spoiler free because I actually really want you to go watch it. I have not been this excited about a TV show since Castle Rock, which I guess that wasn't that long ago. Um, if you haven't watched Castle Rock and you're a Stephen King fan, also go watch that. But besides Castle Rock and The Haunting of Hill House, I just like can't find TV shows that I genuinely really love this much, especially horror shows. I feel like every single time a promising horror show comes out, it's good for like maybe an episode or a season and then it totally shits the bed. I think American Horror Story is a good example of that. I would say that only half of these seasons of American Horror Story are even watchable and there's really only a couple that are enjoyable, at least in my opinion. The Walking Dead also got really shitty really fast. I watched the first two seasons and then realized that it's not a horror at all, it's just a people drama. But this show did not disappoint. I'm not gonna say that it was perfect, but it was extremely enjoyable and I highly recommend it. Also, before we get super deep into this video, I just wanted to point out that my aunt bought me this cute new set of decorations. Um, I absolutely love them. They're adorable. She totally gets me. And now I have a new section of my room to film in. And I have my new skelly friend here who's so cute, adorable, love the eyes. I started watching this show because my sister recommended it. I don't really jump into Netflix originals right away because they can be really hit or miss, but my sister swore up and down that I would love this show. And I'm really glad I gave it a shot because I ended up marathoning through it in like two days. It was so good. I just couldn't stop watching it and then all of a sudden it was done. I remember I first started getting excited about Netflix original series when Orange is the New Black came out and then they started making original movies and everything. And as we all know, some of them were really enjoyable and then other ones were awful, like unwatchable. I don't understand how an entire room of people approved this content bad. But this show has completely restored my faith in Netflix and I will probably go back and watch some of the original series that have come out recently that I didn't end up watching just because this one was so good and I have faith that Netflix can have good taste sometimes. Sometimes. Now I would say that this is not your typical haunted house story. I feel like a lot of people are gonna criticize it for having a lot of horror tropes in it, but I feel like there's only so much that you can do with a ghost story. Um, that being said, this one is extremely well done. It's based on a gothic horror novel from 1959. Yeah, it's from 1959. And the book, which goes by the same name, is said to be one of the best ghost stories of all time. And it's been adapted into two different movies and a play, and now this Netflix series. So I think that says quite a bit about the quality of it. People are constantly trying to make adaptations. Of course, the Netflix series is like a modern day adaptation. I think that this fit really well in modern day. And if you were to watch this and not know ahead of time about its origin, I don't think that you would pick up on the fact that it's based on a pretty old novel because it was like pretty seamlessly integrated with present day. I was really impressed. It didn't feel forced at all. It was done really naturally and it didn't come across as cheesy or at least in my opinion, it didn't. I think the thing that the show did the best was the storyline development and the character development, you actually come to care about the characters, which I feel like so many horror stories forget about that part. It's like all of these tense scenes have no consequence if you don't care about the characters that are involved, but this show really makes you get to know the characters and start to care about them as people. So when a risk is posed, it feels like a real risk you actually care when something happens. You actually feel the emotions that you are supposed to feel. You aren't like forced to feel a certain way because there's super loud, cheesy music playing in the background that's like telling you how you're supposed to feel. Although, honestly, I didn't really pay attention to the soundtrack that much, but I don't feel like it did that. I felt like the emotions that I were feeling throughout the show were genuine. And I actually found myself crying at a few points. Um, again, not a spoiler, but there was a really strong connection between the two twins in the family, Luke and Nell, especially this like ritual that they had with counting buttons. 
I just like felt it so much in my heart and they like brought back that counting buttons ritual at times where like you really felt so hard for these characters and you just oh ow my heart i think that they were just like really effective at expressing emotion and getting you to care about the characters in a genuine way i also thought the special effects were quite good um the imagery was like genuinely terrifying there's this one scene anyone who's seen the show you know what scene i'm talking about steve the oldest brother is alone in his living room and i was watching that scene when I was just kind of like watching Netflix in bed and I immediately was like, oh no, I can't pose, like no. I think it definitely helped that I was watching it alone at night, but it definitely creeped me out to the point where I was like, all right, I gotta watch some like funny videos on YouTube before I can fall asleep now because that scared the shit out of me. The one thing they didn't really do well with the special effects though were the bugs. There's a couple scenes with bugs that you'll see if you end up watching this um, and they look really, not good. But I can totally forgive that because everything else was like pretty awesome. Speaking of scares, we have to talk about jump scares. I feel like every time you talk about any piece of horror content, you gotta talk about jump scares. I can't remember who I was watching. I watch a lot of like movie review channels on YouTube, um, but I believe it was Quentin Reviews, who's really good. If you guys have never watched him, go watch him. Also, if you haven't watched The Horror Guru, also watch him. I'll link both of their channels down below, but um, they're great. Anyway, I think I was watching Quentin Reviews and he was talking about how to do jump scares the right way. And I guess I just hadn't thought about it until I heard him describe it. I don't hate jump scares, I just feel like they're used in a really stupid way, but I couldn't figure out what made them stupid and he did a really good job of explaining why jump scares are sometimes bad and why they're sometimes used well. And I totally agree with this assessment where jump scares should be used in situations where the character in the scene is jump scared. Like if something pops out at them and they are startled by it, then it's an appropriate time for you to also be startled. If you're using a jump scare at any other time, then it's kind of dumb because you're basically just pointing out something creepy in the background that the viewer would have noticed even if it weren't for all the audio and visual cues. People use jump scares because they think that the audience is stupid. We don't need to have this like, this like crazy music and like a big zoom in on something creepy going on in the background. Anyway, sorry for the jump scares rant, but I feel like this show just did a really good job of using jump scares when they were appropriate and also you felt the way that you were supposed to feel throughout the show because you actually cared about the characters, they were well acted, I thought the lines were written really well, um, a lot of the scenes felt really natural. Nothing fell flat. Sometimes I feel like characters are written really similarly if they're all written by one writer, but not only were they able to take this gothic horror novel and adapt it into modern day, but they did it in such a way where there were believable characters that all had unique personalities that I think most of us can relate to, either based on characteristics we see in ourselves or characteristics we see in our family members or friends, and it made it just a lot more enjoyable to watch, a lot more believable, um, just better than most ghost stories. I honestly don't really like ghost stories or paranormal movies at all, which is only partially because I'm still a skeptic about whether or not ghosts exist. I think it's mostly because they're usually written really badly. So this show was really refreshing. My biggest qualm with this show is unfortunately the last episode. I really did not like the last episode. Um, I thought that it was way too poetic um, and not to give away any of the details of how it ended, but I felt like I guess the way it was written was kind of necessary to achieve the ending that they wanted, and I guess it was a satisfying ending to watch, but after a while of these like really overly poetic lines being read out loud by each character, which like didn't fit with the way that the rest of the show was written and acted, it just kind of felt like 
they were babbling nonsense at you for a while. And I think that this was the only point in the show where you could tell that it was adapted from a gothic horror novel and like not in a good way. Like it, it was, it showed its bones in kind of um, an unsavory way. Overall though, I thought the show was genuinely horrifying. It was really well thought out. It was well written. It was well acted. It was thoroughly entertaining and very refreshing from Netflix. And I'm really excited to see what they come out with next. Unfortunately, I feel like this is getting to the end of their horror content for the year now that we're approaching Halloween, but still, very good. Very good show. Highly recommended. If you haven't seen it, go sign up for Netflix and watch it right now because it's really good. Anyway, those are all my thoughts on The Haunting of Hill House. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys watched it and if you did, whether or not you liked it, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. Also, if you like my shirt, it is currently available on MissReaper.com slash shop. I have it available in this long sleeve version, a t-shirt, and also I finally have embroidered beanies. So this design can be bought on an embroidered beanie. I have like a regular beanie and a pom-pom style. All of those are available on my merch store right now, which will also be linked in the description down below. If you guys want to look super cute this fall or winter, I can't recommend any clothes more than these because it's what I will be wearing in the fall and winter this year. Make sure you hit the like button down below if you like this video and hit the subscribe button if you want to see some more stuff from me and I will see you guys next time.